Hello friends, if you are studying the human anatomy and physiology and specially related to the structure and the functions of eye, so you are on the right place where you are going to understand the depth of your understanding with the help of these multiple choice questions. So before directly going to answer these multiple choice questions, I must request that once you should thoroughly go through the topic of I related to its structure and function. After carefully reading the topic, you come to this video and try to solve the different multiple choice questions. In this video, I have covered the several multiple choice questions related to I that will be helpful to you to understand your study related to the eyes. So let us move forward to study these multiple choice questions one by one. Dear friends, in this video, for each multiple choice questions, I have given five seconds for a student to think. But in that case, if you need a more time, at that time, you can pause the video and take your own time. So let us move to the very first multiple choice questions of I. So the first question is, which one of the following layer of eyes is made up of blood vessels? Option A, sclera. Option B, choroid. C, retina and D, cornea. So take your own time to think for this question. So the answer is choroid. As friends, we are very well known that the eye, it is made up of the three layers of tissue. Out of them, the outermost layer, it is the sclera, which is made up of the fibrous tissue. The middle layer, it is the choroid, which is made up of the blood vessels as stated in the question. And the innermost layer, it is retina, which is made up of the nervous tissue and their processes and photoreceptors as well. While the option D, cornea, you can see there, this cornea, it is the anterior continuation of the sclera. So our correct answer is choroid. Next question, which one of the following is anterior continuation of choroid? A. Ciliary body and iris. B. Ciliary body and lens. C. Cornea and lens. D. Cornea and iris. Your time starts now. So friends, again the answer is ciliary body and iris. Which one of the following is the main function of cornea? A. It gives structural support to eye. B. It provides sight for the attachment of muscles. C. It helps to refract the light before it reaches to lens. And D. It helps in the adjustment of lens. Okay, so the correct answer is, it helps to refract the light before it reaches to the lens. The innermost layer of eye consists of, means it is retina, it is consist of A. Photoreceptors B. Bipolar cells and ganglion cells C. Amacrine cells and D. All of the above. In this question, you will find all of the ABO means the option A, B, C are the correct one. The only organ with varying refractory power present in I is A. Retina B. Iris D. Cornea and D. Lens
So the correct answer is lens. Yes, friends, we know very well that the lens it is the only organ which is having the ability to change its thickness based upon whether the vision has to be set for the nearer objects or the distant objects. So it is a reason for what lens is the only organ with varying refractory power. Accommodation of lens is made possible due to a constriction of circular ciliary smooth muscles, b constriction of circular muscles of iris, c constriction of radial muscles of iris, and d constriction of corneal smooth muscles. So the correct answer is option A. It is the constriction of circular ciliary smooth muscles. A lens we know very well that it is attached to the ciliary bodies by means of the radiating suspensory ligaments. So whenever there occurs the constriction and uh, relaxation of the ciliary smooth muscle it results into the accommodation of lens. So the option A is correct that is constriction of circular ciliary smooth muscle. Option B constriction circular muscles of iris and option C constriction of radial muscles of iris produces meiosis and mydriasis respectively. While the option D where it is stated constriction of corneal smooth muscle as such no smooth muscles are present towards the cornea so option d is not a correct answer so only a is the option which we will find the correct one a pupil of an eye is mass of smooth muscle in between iris an aperture at the center of cornea c mass of ciliary body and D an aperture at the center of iris. So friends it is nothing but an aperture at the center of iris. It is not a mass of smooth muscle as stated in the option A. It is not an aperture present at the cornea and it is not any kind of mass of the ciliary body. So the option D is a correct answer. Papillary constriction that is meiosis results due to parasympathetic nerve stimulation innervating ciliary muscles, parasympathetic nerve stimulation innervating radiating muscles of iris, parasympathetic nerve stimulation innervating circular muscles of iris, and D. Sympathetic nerve stimulation innervating radial muscles of iris. Okay, so the correct answer is parasympathetic nerve stimulation which causes circular muscles of iris to constrict, resulting into decrease in the papillary dimensions that is known as a papillary constriction means meiosis. Papillary dilation mydriasis results due to a parasympathetic nerve stimulation innervating ciliary muscles, b parasympathetic nerve stimulation innervating radial muscles of iris, c parasympathetic nerve stimulation innervating circular muscles of iris and d sympathetic nerve stimulation innervating radial muscles of iris so friend this time the correct answer is option d that is sympathetic nerve stimulations these are the sympathetic nerve nerves which reaches to the radial muscles of iris due to the contraction of radial muscles of iris it results into increase in the papillary dimensions known as a papillary dilation or mitriasis. Which one of the following statement is incorrect about cones as photoreceptors? There are 6 millions of cones in an eye. 
they are active in presence of light they are active during darkness and they produce color vision so the correct op option is option c they are active during darkness all of the options a b and d are the correct one while the option c you will find incorrect so our correct answer is option c identify incorrect statement from the followings a retinal is light absorbing part of visual photopigments the rods in the retina have rhodopsin a photopigment while cone have three different photopigments retinal is a derivative of vitamin c and d rhodopsin is the purplish red protein situated in rods only so the correct option is option c retinal is a derivative of vitamin c it is incorrect just because of what this retinal it is a derivative of vitamin a and not the vitamin c so our answer is option c lens of an eye is convex b concave c biconcave and d biconvex it is very straight forward question and the option should be by concave the secretory endothelial cells of ciliary body secretes a aqueous fluid or aqueous humor b vitreous fluid c both a and b and d neither a nor b so definitely friends the answer is option a it is aqueous fluid or humor we know very well the ciliary body it is made up of two parts one is a circular ciliary muscles which control the adjustment of lens and the second one the secretory endothelial cells they have a unique function of secretion of aqueous fluid which is also known as aqueous humor the normal value for intraocular pressure is option a 5 to 10 mm of mercury 10 to 20 mm of mercury 25 to 30 mm of mercury and 0 to 5 mm of mercury so friends the correct option that you must remember it is 10 to 20 mm of hg that is 10 to 20 mm of mercury it is a normal intraocular pressure and this intraocular pressure is built just due to the secretion and the discharge of aqueous fluid or the aqueous humor into the anterior segment of the eye the increase in the intraocular pressure leads to a disease that is known as option a cataract b color blindness c glaucoma and d night blindness so the correct option is it is glaucoma so whenever there is an increase in the intraocular pressure than the normal which is said to be 10 to 20 mm of mercury it leads to a disease known as a glaucoma and if it is not controlled it can damage to the optic nerve and may lead to the blindness as well so friends thank you very much for watching this video and i hope this video must be helpful for you for clearing your any doubt related to the eyes 
Thank you once again and have a nice day. Till then, goodbye.